Welcome back everyone! Have you ever sat in front of a blank screen for hours, wishing there'd be a magic wand that would create the video for you? Well, you are in luck. It's not real magic, but a clever AI feature from Synthesia we're introducing today. So put on your magic hats and let's get going! Victor, the stage is all yours. Welcome everyone, great to see so many people here. Super excited to welcome you to the first webinar of the year. Today we're gonna to be talking about our AI video assistant, which is something I've been looking forward to launching for a long time. And we've been having this feature internally for the last couple of months, and it's just truly magical. Before we talk about the feature though, for those of you who are new to Synthesia, I um, just wanna quickly remind everyone what we do and why we're doing it and, and why this feature is important. So our mission is pretty simple. We wanna make video easy for everyone. We wanna eliminate the need for using cameras and studios and Adobe products that's hard to use and just make it something that everyone really can do. And there's of course a lot of different components around making video easy to do. A few of them is here on the screen. So the avatars of course is what we're very well known for. It eliminates the need for you to film with a camera. You could just generate videos of these actors with AI. We have lots of templates on our platform, which is called essentially pre-made videos. You can take in, edit them, make them your own. Once you've made your video, you can add in different languages, or you can translate your video into different languages, which is the one click. And today what we're gonna be talking about is actually going from that kind of idea to a first draft of what we also think of as being text to video. The reason we think that it's important to make video easy is because when you look at the world today and the digital economy, it's very obvious that people want to watch and listen to their content. They don't wanna read that much anymore. And that's very obvious when you look at people's private lives where most of us spend more time on podcasts and YouTube and TikTok that we do on reading. Um, even though I love reading, I have to say, when I want to learn something new, I actually usually go to YouTube and TikTok. And it makes perfect sense because biologically, we're just hardwired to better understand and remember visual content, right? It stimulates more of our senses. It feels more like the experience we have when we consume information in real life. And that kind of results in us just being more engaged and just remembering more of the content. So there's some research that shows you remember around 70 to 80% of what you watch in a video versus 10% of what you read. That's a pretty big, pretty big differential. And that's why it's super important for anyone who's making content today, which a lot of you out there are, to also work in video, right? Writing blog posts is no longer enough to engage your customers or employees, whoever you're making the content for. With Synthesia, we're really trying to increase that productivity. And we really want this to be a tool that you don't have to be an expert to use, right? We want to enable anyone in our company to be able to go in, make a Synthesia video in just a few minutes to get to that vision and to make it so easy that anyone can do it. And we've been working on our AI video assistant feature for, um, for quite a while now. The AI video assistant is all about taking you to that first draft, getting you 70, 80, maybe sometimes even 90% of the way so that your job as a content creator is to just sort of edit the thing you are, the draft you get in front of you, as opposed to having to start from an entirely uh, blank screen. The AI video assistant works with three different modalities. You can start from a prompt, an idea that's been live for a few months in the product. And now you can also use a link to a blog post, for example, or you can upload a document such as a PDF to get you started on making videos. And especially those two late last ones is, is quite important. We launched this prompt feature a while back and we spoke to the other you awesome people using our product. And you all told us that, a lot of you told us that that feature is great, but actually most of the time when you're making videos, you're starting from something else. You're starting from a different piece of content that you wanna convert into a video. Again, this could be the blog post, could be a PowerPoint slide, it could be literally anything else, right? And so with the prompt uh, version of the AI video assistant, it's kind of hard to take existing content and use it, right? So what we've built now is the link and the URL way to, to use our video assistant. The first one we're gonna go through is how to use uh, the video assistant with a link. So let's say you're Bob here, he's a content marketer at a software company in Austin, and uh, he wants to take his startup's public facing text content, a lot of blog posts, and turn them into videos for use on social media and their general kind of customer education and training. Luis, the CMO, gave him a, a brief pitch. Let's watch the pitch and I'll show you how we solve that problem with the AI video assistant. We need more explainer videos for our social media. Can you take our best performing blog posts and turn them into short, engaging videos? Also add some humor if possible. Thanks. 
All right, so that sounds great, but of course, it's a pretty daunting task to turn tens or hundreds even of blog articles into video content. Luckily, we have the video assistant, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna go about this in just a second. So here's Synthesia. Let's click new video here. Let's click the AI video assistant. Let's input the link, which I have open over here. So this is just a, a boilerplate sort of blog post style website. I'll copy the link, put it in here. And then there's a few things here that, um, that I can edit. So for example, in the objective here, we can tell the system what the objective of this video is, right? In this case, it is to um, educate the viewers on why it's important to track your business expenses. This is a financial product. Um, we want the tone of voice to be professional, but with a touch of humor, like this. And the audience here will put in as owners of small to medium sized businesses who are not financial experts, right? So this will guide it to know that it shouldn't use a lot of lingo that you only will understand if you're an accountant, for example. You can also choose the length. I'll stick with that five scenes now. Let's hit generate video and see what the assistant comes up with. So now, as you can see, it's writing the script. If you read what it's writing here, you'll see that it definitely took the touch of humor seriously. And it's it's actually writing this right in, in the style, in speech language, right? It's not writing this as like in the written language, of course, it's, it's, it's very different. There's also some other smart things going on under the hood outside of just writing um, the, the actual uh, script. What it also does is it looks at the content for each scene and it tries to figure out which of the scenes in our template that matches that content uh, the best. So here it's picked a small little quote. Of course, the first one is the intro slide. Here it picked just the avatar talking. Here we got some bullet points. We got a thank you for your presentation, which seems to make sense, right? Of course, this probably isn't perfect. So we can go in here, continue with the editor, and now you can edit the video like with any other video. In my case, maybe I want to change the avatar. Let's put jazz in here instead. Maybe I want to change up the colors. I want to do something with script. You can, of course, do whatever you want here, right? But it gets you again to that 80% video done. So let's hit generate. And um, we've cheated a little bit. So we'll show you a video with a little bit more love put into it and what that could look like. Many of us daydream about our business growing into this world conquering powerhouse. But sometimes we neglect the minor stuffs that can transform our fantasy into reality. Yes, I'm talking about tracking business expenses. Think of the meticulous tracking of your business expenses as having X-ray vision for your financial health. Provides a clear picture of funds coming in and going out, helping you avoid falling into a financial abyss. Now to the scary stuff, taxes. Navigating the labyrinth of tax regulations can give even the bravest soul palpitations, but accurate expense tracking is your suit of armor. It eases claiming deductions, while also ensuring you stay within the realms of tax laws. The bottom line pain-free compliance and more saved money. Thank you for your time today. If you're looking for investors, well-managed and transparent expense tracking acts, please don't hesitate to contact me. Don't be fooled by its mundane facade, for in its depth lies the key to your business growth and prosperity. Okay, so that's the first modality. The second modality you can use here is PDFs or documents. Now the link is great for content that's already public. A lot of the times that could be things like marketing materials, but this feature is great for internal facing content that may not be available on the public internet, right? So this could be some of your internal processes, sales trainings, it could be a million different things. The example we have here is Charlotte, she's a pet shop owner from Colorado. And every time they send out pet food to their customers, they put in a PDF with some tips and tricks on how to think about nutrition for that particular dog breed. This is working well, uh, the customers love it, but Nick from Customer Support had an idea to make this into something that's easier to digest for their customers, which of course is video, right? So let's, let's hear what Nick has to say, and then I'll show you how we go about working from a document. Those tips for dog owners are great. Is there a way we can turn them into videos and upload to our website to educate our clients? I get tons of these questions daily, and this would be really helpful. All right, so Nick has a good point. Let's turn those PDF documents into videos. So again, we'll go up here, new video, AI video assistant. I go to the document this time, 
and I will find my file. So I have a Labrador Retriever file. This is what it looks like. We'll add that in. Objective here will be to educate dog owners on how to think about their dog's nutrition. Here we would like the speaker to be a veterinarian. Um, so that's kind of, again, the tone of voice and, and or like the, it's written in the style of someone. In terms of the tone here, let's say informal and a bit fun. Let's change the template. So for this video, I want something a little bit different. Let's maybe take this one. We'll pick that template. And maybe just to show you here, when you when you select the template, you can of course see all the different slides that it'll, it'll choose between, right? So we'll use this template and then we'll hit generate video. And now what uh, the video is doing is it's reading through that document. It's passing all the information in it. And then it, with the help of our prompt, is turning that into something that is a video that matches what we, we wanted to do. So again here, you know, we're writing the scripts. I selected five scenes this time. Maybe I should have selected a bit more because this could probably afford a bit longer content. And as you can see here, it's picking all the different scenes inside of the, the, the template, um, depending on the actual content. So I'm sure we'll see some bullet points somewhere, a few different bullet points for some of the, the text in here. And of course, the last one is the goodbye slide. So let's open up the editor again. As with before, we can change anything you want here. This is essentially the same thing, but again, get you to that kind of starting point you can then work from. And we're of course working on also being able to take in all the images on the website of the document so that um, this is even, even better um, in, in the kind of first draft version of it. So let's see what that video looks like. Let's turn our attention to our livable Labradors today, especially their unique dietary needs. These energetic furballs require a diet rich in proteins, such as chicken, beef, or fish. It's not just about proteins. Our labs need a buffet of nutrients. A mix of proteins, fats, cobs, to ensure they can outlast a toddler on a sugar rush without gaining those extra pounds. And let's not forget, labs come with that beautiful dense coat. Omega-3 fatty acids are like a spa treatment for their fur. Also look for controlled levels of calcium and phosphorus in their food, not too much, not too little, just right. You might even want to consider dog foods, like Hill's Science Diet or Merrick's Grain-Free Chicken and Sweet Potato Recipe. Let's keep those tails wagging, ears flopping, and bellies full of yummy, nutritious food. The last example is from just a prompt or from an idea. So this functionality is really good if you're making content about something that's general by nature. So let's say something like soft skills, how to handle conflict, how to do stress management. Those kind of topics are, are fairly general by nature. They, they wouldn't vary too much between different companies and they're not like personal personalized to your specific company, right? And this is where um, this feature can come in really, really handy. So here we have Rachel, she's an HR lead at a law firm in New York City. And she wants to generate training videos for these kind of like general soft skills, right? Ben, her manager, gave her a brief, so let's hear what he has to say. Hey, Rachel. As discussed yesterday, we need that stress management training in a video format. We want to share it with the employees next week. We'll jump back into studio, and then we'll use the prompt. So the prompt here is the one we call idea. What we want to do here is now give it some context about what we want to create a video about. So let's say here we want to do an internal training video about stress management for employees of a law firm in the USA. All right, this probably needs to be a bit longer than five scenes. Um, maybe we'll give it eight. The tone of voice here should be professional because this is a law firm. The audience uh, would be lawyers who are working high stress jobs. We can leave it at that. There's another cool functionality for all of these, which I haven't shown before, which is the language. You can actually also give us a prompt or a document in English, and then you can get it out in a different language if that's what you'd like. Um, but we'll leave that out for now. Again, selecting a different template here. This one looks a bit more professional generate the video. And now what it's doing, right, is it's not reading through a specific URL or blog post you gave it. It's not reading through a document that you fed it. Here, it's actually the kind of general uh, intelligence technology, right, GBTs that you've probably heard of before, which from this, this prompt 
kind of comes up with, with some tips and tricks on how to do stress management. And that's where this feature really excels. If you're doing these kind of more general um, types of content, then this is really good at coming up with kind of a boilerplate that you can then work from, right? And so when you see here, what it's doing is essentially coming up with a bunch of different ways you can mitigate stress in a corporate environment. It's again, selecting all the different scenes. And as with all the other modalities, of course, you can, you can edit all the details of it after it's done generating here. And I think this template, for example, works well for this example, right? If it's a law firm, then you probably want to have an avatar that has a suit on. You want it to look a little bit more professional. And we're, of course, going to be adding many more templates. And also, one of the things I'll talk about in a second is how we're going to enable you to do this, but in your own template with your own styling and colors, right? It's actually quite cool. I like this tagline to put under here, stress management for lawyers balancing high stakes and daily strain. That's pretty cool. Let's see what that video looks like with a little bit more extra love. Welcome to the Stress Management Guide. It's designed for diligent lawyers like you, managing high pressure cases alongside daily legal profession strains. Let's start with identifying the sources of our stress, which may include heavy caseloads, demanding clients, or tight deadlines. The first step to managing stress is acknowledging its presence. Once identifying the sources of your stress, let's talk about the impact of stress on physical and mental health. When stress becomes overwhelming, it increases the risk of anxiety and depression. Additionally, it can lead to sleep issues and muscle tension. Finally, it's time to learn how to help yourself with stress. First, eat healthy. There is a growing amount of evidence showing how food affects our mood. Second, exercise. Physical exercise can be very effective in relieving stress. Even going out to get some fresh air and walking to the shops can help. Third, take time to relax. Striking a balance between responsibility to others and to yourself is important in reducing stress. And fourth, be mindful. Mindfulness meditation can be practiced anywhere at any time. It can alleviate the effects of stress and other related issues such as insomnia, poor concentration, and low moods. All right, so that's the kind of three main modalities of the feature. Can't wait for you guys to start using it. Tell us what you think, what can we do better? Um, we really believe that this is a very important part of the product and there's of course still lots of things to do. Um, and the next step for us really is learning from all of you what you'd like to see. Some tips and tricks from us is like, first one is the context. So you've seen me do this with all of the videos. Make sure to add in enough context for the AI system to understand what you want, who's the audience, what's the objective. It can be tempting to just put in a few lines and letting it go from that. And sometimes that works, but the more context you give it, the better results you're gonna get out of it. It takes us to number two, be specific with your prompt. So the more kind of action language, easy to understand it is, the better it will work. So try and keep it very down to earth um, and very kind of concrete when you're asking it to do specific things. The last one, which is actually quite important, is the length. So we saw me generate a few different lengths here, but if you give us a 15 page, a 20 page PDF document and you ask us to only make three scenes of that, then you're gonna get a very short summary of what was in those uh, 20 scenes, right? So in that case, unless you want a very short summary, of course, you probably wanna go to 15, 15 scenes maybe to make sure you capture all that content. And also the other way around, if you give us half a page um, of text and you ask us to make 15 or 18 scenes, the system is inevitably going to build a lot upon the content that you fed it. So trying to find the right balance there is really, really helpful in terms of getting the result that you want. The last thing I want to show you is um, a related feature. We also think of this as the video assistant, but this is all about doing it inside the editor. So not as a step to generate the draft, but to actually work with you while you're making your video. So if we go back into the video we did before here, this is the one for stress management and lawyers. If I mark my text here, I can preview the audio like I've always been able to do, but I can also click here to edit with AI. Edit with AI is a freeform prompter that can just help you do whatever you want it to do. You just type out what you want. There's some suggestions under here, as you can see, make it longer, shorter, change tone, summarize. In this case here, I feel like this is a bit short for this video. So let's ask it to make this particular parent longer like this. Again, you can see what it's doing here. It's typing with you in real time. And it should just take this paragraph, put a bit of meat on and just make it a little bit longer, right? So let's say we like this. Yes, that's pretty good. Down here, let's say for this one, we want to make it a bit longer and tell a joke. <laughs> so we've got a, a, a bit of a dad joke here. Why don't scientists ever trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Um, let's go with that. And it could get as wacky as you want it to become, really. Like, let's take this one here and let's do something even more crazy. Let's say write this paragraph 
in the style of Homer Simpson. This is probably not something you're going to be using much, but I just want to show you how open-ended and freeform this actually really is. If you're reading what it's putting off, you can probably imagine Homer Simpson saying something like that. This is a feature that can kind of just like help you get over that writer's block, add a little bit more meat to your videos or shorten it a little bit. That can also be very helpful. I actually often shorten it more than I make it longer. Um, and it's a really cool thing to just have kind of by your side as an assistant when you're making your, your video content. So this is the AI video assistant in its current state. Just to summarize, you can create videos now from your idea prompt, links, documents. You can localize it in many different languages. You have all these settings, right, with the context you can put around it. And we also now have the script editor that works inside of the editor, um, where you can work with it not as a pre-step, but inside the editor. What we're launching soon and what we're working on, which is going to superpower this feature, is going to be brand kits. So the ability for you to define a certain style for your company. Um, that could be your colors, your fonts, and things like that. And we can make it in your template. And of course, also being able to take in the imagery and other things that you can find in a document or URL to get you even closer to the final result. Um, but again, as I said before, we'd love to hear your feedback on this. It's always very valuable for us and um, for you to tell us where this thing works really well and where it fails. But we're very excited to keep working on this feature. And I think it'll be a fantastic tool to make hundreds of videos very easily in the not too distant future. This was all we had for this January's webinar. webinar. Next one in February, we're going to have two huge releases, maybe even bigger than this one. We have live collaboration launching for everyone. This is where you can see each other's cursors, co-create in real time. You know this from Miro, Figma, Google Drive, whatever other creative tools you use. And of course, we have the expressive avatars, which is the update to our avatar platform. It's going to take the avatars to be more lifelike and more realistic, better voices. You've seen some of the examples, actually, I think in this video. Um, but this is going to be really awesome and it's just going to up level the quality of everyone's videos. That was all we had for today. Looking very much forward to seeing you for the next one in February. Have a good day, everyone, and see you soon. And that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed today's event. But before we sign off, just a quick note. You can now also create Synthesia videos featuring two avatars in one scene, like this one. Click on the link posted in the comments. Try both new features and share your videos with us on social media. We're excited to see your creativity in action. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you all soon. Ciao, ciao.